All right, yo, what's up, guys? You've got Lightning here, back at you guys with another video. Uh, this time, I want to do a bit of a dip, something different. Um, <clears throat> I noticed a lot of my videos are really long, like full gameplays, and I figured that some people that come to my channel they might want something just you know, a bit shorter, five to ten minutes, uh, just for a quick watch. Because um, I understand that you know watching gameplays all the time can get a bit boring, especially when someone like me is commentating them. <laughs> but anyway, um, so this game I wanted to go over because. Um, this I had a plan in, in lane and and it really worked out and I just wanted to show that you know when you come into a game with a right mindset and a plan uh, of what you want to do in the early game let's just pause right we take a look at the matchup so I'm versing Gangplank Gangplank's a really good example because there's a really easy way to beat him and then a really hard way you can screw yourself in lane or you can or you can take over the lane um, Shaco versus he you notice that Shaco has uh, Ignite and also he's starting blue buff, which means uh, he wants to eventually go over his red buff Normally, that's what shakers do right they'll start blue buff and then invade and I think that the red team is pinging so they know that but we don't we can't see them pinging obviously, right? Uh, we have kale. Oh, sorry Kassin versus kale. I think that's a pretty relatively passive lane until sort of level six Kassin can um, <clears throat> You know farm in this lane pretty good just trade with Q's whenever her ease up sort of thing uh, Civil Lulu versus Tristan Morgana I think the only risk in this matchup is if, you know, Morgana lands a snare and then Trist jumps. I mean, it could go either way, right? Depending on how they trade. But we're not really worried about the bot lane. Um, <clears throat> we're mostly worried about top lane, the jungle, and, and the mid lane. Because that's the only lanes that could really affect us in the first sort of 10 minutes of the game. Unless bot lane absolutely snowballs or something like that, right? So, you know, we'll, we'll play the game. And so the first thing I noticed, obviously, as I just said before, Shaco's starting blue buff. <clears throat> I'm giving him a small leaf. He just, he just said two autos and then I'm going into his red. So he actually told me to show up, jump onto my character. So we go into lane. Um, Gangplank's already there, so we know Yi started blue. Um, so that gives Shaco free pass to, to go into Yi's red. And now, <clears throat> level one, I'm just feeling Gangplank out. Let's pause it right there. So level one, you see where Gangplank is in the wave. At this point, I'm thinking, is he going to try and like run me down the lane with, with Qs and try and, um, you know, um, zone me from the XP from these minions or is he just going to sort of farm now with these first three minions um, I started Q because he's you know technically ranged with his Q um, for trading level one uh, I'm just going to wait until they get low and then my plan is to <clears throat> go aggressive on this guy level one because we know where he is he's he's down here he'll be here we're here right now so oh Gromp so he's bot side jungle anyway so he's either going to do a full clear with Gromp wolves and then to uh, rap, uh, Raptors and then and then Red, or he's just going to go Gromp and then straight to Red. We don't know, but um, I guess most of the time Yees do a full clear. They love to do this sort of shit, right? So I know for at least the first three minutes of the game, um, I've got free reign on this lane. I can make it my lane, um, or you know, he can really he, or he could really screw me over. So I've got to take it over early, right? So level one, <clears throat> we're watching these three minions here, right? They're all low, so we queue all of them and immediately go on them. Popping Corrupting Potion straight away. Pop press the attack. We've got Sudden Impact as well. And we use it and then get another auto. Get them really low, okay? So level one. We just won the level one really, really hard. Um, I've still got two more um, stacks of Corrupting Potion. Now, he's grunting Kleptomancy, right? Now that doesn't do any extra damage, but it does grant him gold when he's got Minion Deter Dematerializer. So... Although he doesn't have uh, like hard out damage or defense, uh, he's running lots of you know um, utility to get extra gold and rush that triforce sort of thing, and along with his passive, of course. So at level one, two, and three, it's important that I take it over. So all I'm doing is just moving around, left, right, up, down, in the bush, out of the bush, uh, queuing minions, trying to get the jump on him. And see, le level one, we just blow his flash straight away, and I ping the shit out of it because Shaco's mid lane. He could come up to top lane and potentially you know get this kill for us, right? So. All I do now is just not hard shove the wave. I don't want to shove it into his tower. I want to just zone him from the CS uh, at the early levels because I can't I can't really dive him level 2 or anything. So there's no point in me shoving. And we, I can see Yi here because uh, of the ward. So I know he might come, right? So <clears throat> eventually that's going to shove into his uh, tower anyway. But we just want to keep the the, the risk, uh, sorry, the, the threat of you know jumping on him. Now, we'll, as I jump on him here... I activate my, my W, stun him, <clears throat> and I made a mistake, I accidentally cancelled my auto, so he actually got quite a bit of damage on me because of that, so 
even though that happened, I've still got another charge of my. I just used my last charge of corrupting potion, but um, I still I still win trades at this point. So um, there's a few things to note, right? With with the Yi, I know he's coming up. So now's the point where I really really want to shove the the wave into his tower because all the waves back here, even on his side, as you can see, the waves all the way back here. So there's, there's at least sort of um, you know another 15 to 20 seconds by the time it, well maybe not 20 seconds, 15 seconds by the time it hits here. So now the objective is just to shove it right into his lane. Uh, sorry, into his tower. <clears throat> I just don't want to ch get chunked by the barrels, just in case um, he's able to get quite a lot of damage on me. You can see the U coming up. Now, because he didn't get his red buff, I know he can't kill me here. And also, I had too many minions for Gangplank to commit to the to the gank. I'll just speed it up, right, because there's no point watching this. So then they, they get a failed gank, and we get information on where he is. He's up top. And also his CS count, 20, 24 now, so um, from that we can work out that he's done like six camps, right? So that's the, that's the one, two, three, four, five, oh, it must have been a couple of CS that he got in it as well. So we know we did a full clear. So we know right now, oh sorry, that's too fast. All I'm doing is keeping the threat of the, of the Q. Um, to jump onto Gangplank, because notice what he bought. So he's rushed his Sheen, he's squishy, but he has a bit of burst damage now. I got my Longsword and Boots. Um, longsword because I want the extra damage for when I go onto him, and Boots so I can sort of keep up, make sure I get my three autos for press the attack, and, and really get that damage off on him, right? Chuck a ward down, wards are always good. Kill this ward. Um, notice I walked back a bit further just to get the XP for this minion. I don't know if I was in range from, from here, but just to be safe, right? Um, notice it's slow pushing into his tower. So I'm just waiting for the moment that he walks up to here to try and queue one of these minions, right? So we get him low again. He's making so many mistakes. He's going up way too far. If we just go back, you'll see the mistake he made quite easily. So while I'm clearing the wood, he thinks it's okay to queue these minions, right? He's placing his barrels. We don't really care about that. He comes up to queue one of these minions, right? And then I just go straight on him. So he's not looking at his low health minions that um, I could potentially jump on. He's not aware of uh, the threat. So now we've slowly whittled him down and now the lanes, the waves pushed into his tower, right? So he's stuck, he can't go back any further. So he's stuck at his tower, right? So now we just play a few mind games with him, walk up to him a bit, uh, make him miss a CS for, you know, a small trade. Um, obviously we're still way ahead in, um, <clears throat> in you know, in, in health and whatnot. We've out-traded him really well. And then now prepping some minions is really important because when you're back here, um, you can sort of, it's about mind games, right? So you can sort of, stay back here and then and then you know Q to a minion then Q to this one just like I'm doing now I activated my W unfortunately he was fast enough to react he wasn't close enough um, small mistake from here I could have probably done that a bit better but then he walks up again he didn't think I'd Q back and, re that, and the result of that was just me um, getting an easy kill on him really I didn't really I didn't do anything spectacular I just came into the lane with a plan um, and being gangplank you generally beat him quite early and if you if you don't beat him early, he can he can sort of be a pain in the ass. But if you do beat him early, um, you can really just just dumpster him the whole game. So here, notice I um, activate my W, prep this minion, then kill it. He must have thought that I didn't have my Q. So then I do the Q for the sudden impact, and then the um, third auto for the um, <clears throat> press the attack as well. And then that gives me the kill, and that gives me all the advantage in lane that I need to basically snowball my lane. Use the ult just to um, push it hard because it forces TP, and then we go back. And then we look at the gold, and that gets me 400 gold ahead. Um, get, lets me, you know, get closer to my Triforce, right? So that's what I just wanted to talk about quickly, just but by having a plan, going into a lane where you know the matchup. Because I mean, I, I use a rally as an example because obviously I play like lots of Aurelia, right? So. Every time I go into a lane with Aurelia, I always have a plan or some sort of plan, right? So even if you take Renekton, for example, levels 1 to 3, yeah, you can't really fight them. So when the lane starts, even if we go back to um, level 1, right? So reversing Renekton, um, you can sort of E-auto him and bait his Q to make him push the wave. And then when it, by the time he hits like level 2, um, the wave will be about here. And then eventually he'll push it and possibly get level three and it'll get to your tower. You get all the CS that's been building up because you have and you haven't been trading with them past level one with your E auto, so your full health, and then you get all that CS. And then when it pushes back out to the middle, or maybe even about here, 
you eventually he'll get level four, but also um, you'll get level four as well once um, your minions kill more of his minions. And then you can um, you can sort of fight him at level four even, you know. But as long provided you haven't taken a beating levels one to three, you can actually out trade him level four. Um, if he sort of slices into you and then and then you get a stun on, if you stun him while he stuns you, then um, it sort of cancels each other out and then you can start autoing him and then when he dices away you can queue him, uh, activate, press the attack and you actually out trade him that way. Um, you just got to do it carefully and if you don't take that beating early levels, you know, you can level four is like a sweet spot where you can actually um, get a good trade on him if he, if he sort of fights you while your minions are pushing back to his tower. Um, <clears throat> whereas Gangplank's the other way around, level one, um, you'll notice I, you know, I played really aggressive, went straight onto him when I first got the chance, and then did the same thing when the next wave come. Before we hit level two, um, or sorry, he's just hit level two. I haven't, and he still has to flash away. So that just goes to show, you know, if you come into lane having a plan, um, you know, look at all, look at the, the champions and the matchups before the game starts, while it's in the loading screen, and then by the time you actually start the game. Um, <clears throat> and see where the junglers are starting. You know, you can actually have a really good idea about how how the lane's going to play out and how you want to um, go about winning it, right? So that's just uh, something quickly I wanted to go over. It probably went a bit too long. Uh, what's that? Like twelve minutes, I guess. So, or well, not quite twelve minutes. Um, but hopefully, it was something shorter for you guys. I hope I hope I sort of explained it the way that you understand. I tried to sort of um, go through it how I wanted to explain to me, but. Uh, um, let me know how it was, um, like the video if you liked it, if you learned something from that, or subscribe if you want more content like this, and comment if you've got any suggestions. Um, always willing to take suggestions from people that watch my videos. And also, I'm starting to stream on Twitch a, a bit more. I think I've fixed my quality, it's it's looking pretty good now I think, but um, uh, it can still get better. Um, but I'm starting to stream on there a bit more, I don't have a schedule or anything, but if you're a guy that uses uh, Twitch and watches uh, streamers, feel free to give me a follow on there and um, you know we can have a chat on, on Twitch while I'm streaming. But anyway guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I will definitely see you guys in the next video. Yeah.